Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you. This is between Leela ID 61056 against Stockfish 10. The time limit is 3 minutes with a 2 second increment. And the opening given to them to explore is the Vienna game. So e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6, g3. This is a very interesting solid move which can have great ambitions on the king side. We see bishop c5 by Stockfish, bishop g2, knight f6, knight g e2. So this keeps the option potentially of moving this f pawn later. And if the king can castle and play king h2, that's going to really become possible. d6. In fact, here, Leela goes for the dark square bishop. Stockfish plays bishop d4. So intriguing move, bishop d4. We have d3, not wanting to take the bishop immediately. On c3, perhaps this blocks the knight's retreat. Black could consider bishop takes f2 check and b5. And uh, both sides would not be in a hurry to do anything yet. Well, black wouldn't have to take immediately, but eventually, after b takes, it should be about even technically. Black has that b file pressure. It's an interesting position. White does have the bishop pair though. Uh, so, anyway. After bishop d4, d3 was played, a5, and this does kind of threaten to maintain that bishop on the diagonal to be annoying. That bishop is uh, snapped up with knight takes d4. We have e takes. At the moment, this is not a real threat, b5, because there's always e5. It may be pretty soon, though. White plays b3 as if to give the knight, well, it does actually give the knight the parking space b2 in the event of later b5. Uh, we have now both sides castling. Rook e8, now f4. It seems a very pleasant position for white at this point. The bishop pair is going to be very handy usually in general. The knight does have a nice retreat if this ever becomes a threat without e5 being dangerous. Uh, we have queen d7. Now knight b2, so the knight is rerouting. It looks as though it wants c4 potentially, but that might not be the route. We have h6 being played. On queen g4, which you might think is a nuisance move to consider, perhaps white can just take off the queen and just claim a small positional advantage. So, okay, the queen's off, not so much fun, but there looks to be a space advantage and the bishop pair. So with those two uh, things, it looks as though white should have a small advantage. Okay, so uh, in the game we have h6, and it's really interesting now. After h3, b6, we have g4. This seems justifiable. White with the bishop pair, bishop pair can control in particular the dark squares. This bishop is without a counterpart, so white shouldn't be in too much trouble immediately on dark squares. You'd think. Bishop b7. We have queen f3. This is quite a nifty move quite often in the Vienna. Uh, pivoting sometimes to g3, which gives support for g5 sometimes, and the g file generally is quite dangerous. We have queen e7. So black doesn't seem to have a major plan right now. Uh, a couple of, just to give uh, the nature of the position, say, say knight h7, a3 to stop knight b4. This position, yeah, white's doing quite nicely. There's preparations potentially for g5 later. On knight b4 attacking c2, the queen can go to f2 to parry that. Then after f5, kick the knight back. And maybe even, you know, use c4 sometimes like this is a special case. And the queen can come back to h4 with a vengeance. So this kind of scenario with f6 actually, with that default rook now being really activated, could spell huge danger for black's king side, like this variation shows. So hitting the queen here with rook f5, and it gets super dangerous with queen g5. That's going to be winning for white. So there are scenarios which actually the queen bounces back, and the f file is dangerous. We have queen e7, a3, locking out knight b4, rook a d8, bishop d2. d5 is played now, so that seems to be a logical move for black to try and uh, attack the center. Uh, rook f8 by contrast looks passive and kind of just waiting for white to do stuff and white could eventually just prepare g5 for example. 
uh, even if it's uh, a temporary pawn stack. If black plays g5 ever, white's just getting a fantastic position here with a space advantage, a big clamp on the king side. And the light squares are actually quite strong for white here. The knight's quite nice. b5 is out of the question. That's a beautiful position for white uh, with an advantage. So d5 here, e5, knight d7. Now here, uh, we're told in chess, if you don't have a default plan, try and improve your worst piece. Now, one perk of black playing a pawn to d5, uh, at, at the moment, by the way, queen takes, there's there's things like knight d takes e5. It's, it's not palatable to take that. It looks as though it's loose. It does lock out the knight, though, on b2. And interesting, with, with, this, with this move h6, fundamentally, uh, if one got a knight in theory to f5, it would be difficult to kick it with g6. And in fact, uh, even at this time control, uh, there's a major intuition for getting a knight to f5, quite incredible. As, as humans, we could reverse engineer uh, any potential long-term knight journey. So maybe we would look at f5 and say, well, there. But how to actually get it from b2, say that knight, how would you actually get it to there? It turns out this kind of route is possible. And in fact, this is the route which is uh, chosen now, remarkably. Knight d, uh, d1. This knight has got a long, uh, illustrious career ahead of it. Knight f8. If f6, you might think, well, can't f6 be played? Here, actually, uh, this is not possible. Queen takes d5 check. And actually, with queen c4, White is surviving any sacrificial attack against the king position, it seems, uh, to be a piece up. This should be absolutely great for white. There's no problem. The knight on f2 controls key squares there. So we have um, knight f8 being played, knight f2, knight g6. If we look at f6 again here, uh, e takes, queen takes, g5 is actually quite dangerous. For example, this position, knight g4, key tempo gain, queen g3. And that temporary pawn sack has created huge issues for black. The rooks uh, looking at the queen after fg. So say queen g6, f5, queen f2, avoiding the exchange of queens. That g file is opening up with a vengeance. And white can establish a nice attacking position, basically with prospects like that on the G file, with huge prospects on the G file. Even if there's a self pin, it's only temporary, and then white's winning material, for example. So yeah, there are very dangerous lines here. Uh, here, if G takes, by the way, there's knight h6 check, just showing the G file dangers. Yeah, stronger than the exchange of queens, just taking here, this kind of thing, building up pressure on G7. Uh, could lead to mate in some lines. So very, very interesting position. F6 seems a bit weakening. So knight g6. And the knight continues its wonderful tour to f5. So beautiful positional play, even at this rapid time control. a4, b4. This seems to snuff out major issues on the queen side. Knight a7. Okay, the knight might come into c3 later. But the other point is to liberate the c-pawn. Knight g3, knight b5. Knight h5. It's interesting that in this position, knight f5 is also kind of lucrative, uh, perhaps for more tactical reasons. For example, this scenario uh, with uh, a build up like this with h4, it looks as though it's easy to play on the king's side here for an attack with a big advantage. But knight h5 is also dangerous for very specific reasons, actually, after b takes rook c8. Uh, we have a beautiful move here. Can you see what Leela played in this position, which really celebrates uh, basically the dark square bishop without the counterpart, the knight on h5. We've already got targeting here. We need a sort of battering ram. Um, and we actually get a battering ram on steroids with this next move, facilitated by this next move, actually. Can you see what white plays here? Okay, 500 points for this, if you can get it. E6, it really weakens black's king side. Uh, G5 is also possible, by the way. So, you know, give yourself 100 points for that. Knight takes G7 here is a key move. For example, this position uh, is pretty good for white as well. But E6 is very nifty. Knight H4. So what happens on F takes? F5. And you can see the pressure on the dark squares really being maximized. Well, I can afford to give up that dark square bishop there. 
to push f6. And after this, it's pretty devastating for the king side, like f7. Queen e5 threatening checkmate is better than taking the rook, technically. Yeah, and uh, this is just a huge position. Yeah, obviously, whites are rook up there. So f takes f f5 is actually quite nasty. Uh, yeah, very very interesting. If queen takes f5, this position again is nasty for black. White's getting a big advantage. So knight h4 was tried. We have queen g3. Knight takes, queen takes. Now f takes, and similar kind of pattern f5. With a big idea of f6, it's it's a very very difficult position. Uh, so rook f8 was tried. On e takes, g takes, queen f7, bishop takes h6. So the queen can't take, so queen takes g7 mate, and th this is a big attacking build up. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's it's very very juicy the the attacking uh, potential here. Uh, so yeah, I mean this this kind of variation is slicing Black's king to bits, for example. Like this, absolutely slicing. So uh, rook f8. We have f6 here. G takes this slices as well. Bishop takes h6. Okay, Black in theory has got got the c3 square without Bishop takes c3, but the king side is on fire here. King h7. If rook f7 to maintain not losing the exchange, g5 is really strong. Yeah, this dark square pressure is quite intense. For example, this and the pawn's dangerous. And this, that pin's really a mighty pin here with a loose queen. And yeah, it's just winning material. This is just smashing through. This kind of scenario is absolutely crushing. It's going to be winning the queen anyway. So bishop takes h6, crashing through basically. Bishop takes, rook takes, c takes b6. Bishop c8, rook a e1, rook f7. The game ended here. It's overwhelming advantage for white. Both engines for it was like plus eight. Uh, if it continued, as an example, queen g3 uh, improved the position with queen f4. So threatening knight takes f6. Uh, it's pretty hopeless here. So yeah, black's only got futile resistance and it's two exchanges down there, for example. So I'll take you to that game end position. So I thought one nifty feature of this particular game was that really nice knight maneuver to f5. And the other feature I thought was nice was e6 as a prelude to that battering ram, celebrating that dark square bishop asset, which was picked out as part of the opening, you know, snatching that bishop with knight a4. I thought it was all pretty nifty, this b3, and it gives it gives us a roadmap for, for the Vienna player. Once you collect that dark square bishop, kind of reroute your knight to the king side. Try and get it working with a bishop with a battering ram. There's a nice recipe here, which maybe we can use in our own games. So that's pretty exciting. If you want to check out some other finesses and resources in the Vienna game generally, there's a fantastic course at Chessable there on King's Crusher TV slash Vienna, which has got some free trainable variations. So this really could be a, a powerful weapon for white. If you're looking as an alternative for, for say, the Royal Pairs, this is uh, off the beaten track a bit. The Vienna is a bit of a surprise weapon, and these games show it's really quite dangerous on the king side for black, especially when white gets that dark square bishop in the opening. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much.